This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Alright, continuing Sachi's route today at The Promise. Interesting skit title. What's going on here? Let's find out. There's no such thing as a woman who hates being complimented. One day, when I casually complimented my master's appearance, she praised me in return with those words. From what she told me, the rule applies even to women who claim to dislike flattery. Sometimes complaining is just another way of reacting to happiness. Hmm. Oh, hey, Michiru. We haven't seen you in a little bit. Hello there, Michiru. Your famous twin tails are looking particularly good this morning. Oh boy, she's so predictable in what she's going to say. Michiru, whose gimmick is a prickly soon attitude, may say this. But judging from the way she's happily playing with her hair as she skips up the stairs, I don't think my master spoke in error. At least not in that situation. I'm pretty sure I picked up a knack for this sort of thing unconsciously at a fairly young age. Playing outside for hours at a time to escape the awkward atmosphere at home, I developed a sly habit of in of ingratiating myself with the other kids through lavish praise. Oh, you were a butt kisser. Awesome! I can't believe you can do that! Or, you got a hundred points on your test? That's amazing! Or whatever, whatever else seemed called for. Looking back on it, I was kind of a creepy little brat in that respect. <laughs> that's that's what you need to watch out for. You don't want to be... You don't want to come off as creepy with the compliments. But as long as I kept up the compliments, nobody tried to harm me. And there were even some eccentrics who'd actively play with an otherwise gloomy little introvert like me. Okay, watch carefully. Here goes. Hiya! Well, well, did I pull it off? Heh <laughs> thanks. I don't think it's that amazing, but today's the first time I managed it. I wanted to show you first, Yukun. Who is this? Of course, since I'd always thought of myself as the worthless scrap left over after the formation of my genius sister, I was probably pretty sincere in believing everyone I met was superior to me. Hey, Sachi. Yeah. And here we have an exemplary personification of my master's teachings. Given an open choice of any reward, Sachi specifically requested my praise. It's probably safe to say she fundamentally longs to be complimented. Why would you ask me that? I'd love to hear how you arrived at that question. Oh no, I was just getting a flashback. Let me get this straight. You think a complex expression on my face means I'm indulging in obscene delusions? Okay, well that's not true. We gotta work on that. And sometimes I wonder if she fundamentally longs to be smacked upside the head. Oh, that's funny, because that's the time I usually start streaming Fruit of Grisea, 1 p.m. That's right. But, like I said yesterday, no cramming for this one. You're still making the rounds? With those words, Sachi pumps her fist slightly into the air, was still clutching her broom. Maybe it's because she's able to wear this uniform more frequently during vacation, but the girl seems to be turning into an even more of a maid by a temperament. Well, devoting yourself to volunteer work is all well and good, but make sure you don't give yourself heat stroke out there. That's good. I, I don't want any of the girls getting heat stroke. I don't think that's how that works, Sachi. I think I'm going to have to check up on her later for safety's sake. Hmm? A little before 1pm, a harsh, familiar electronic buzz from my breast pocket interrupts the leisurely afternoon. JB, huh? No, we don't gotta work! After a moment of faint electronic noise, I hear a low, steady voice on the other end of the line. Her tone is enough to tell me that this is a phone call from my superior, not my guardian. No worries, I'm by myself at the moment. Okay, I've got your Culver's coupons here, but you need to hurry up and get them before uh, Michiru finds them. Judging from the hurried way JB's speaking, it seems this particular call may not have been planned in advance. Something serious might have come up unexpectedly. 
Do we have something troublesome on our hands? In other words, you want me as insurance in case things go south. That's enough to scarf down a quick lunch. I'll be ready in five. Don't thank me before a job. It's bad luck. Anyway, where do you need me? <laughs> I'm sending the coordinates on your spy watch. <laughs> Affirmative. Placing the black cell phone on top of my desk, I quickly begin to change into my work clothes. Well, that's crappy timing. I don't have any problem with doing the job I'm paid for, but I had plans of Sachi in the immediate future. And I can't just call to let her know since her cell phone's out of commission. Please be in the dorm. Nope, she's probably scrub scrub a dub dubbing. Oh, were you? You weren't listening in on us. You better not have been. I throw open my door with a little prayer, startling Sachi as she's sweeping the lobby. Oh, okay, she's just switching. Sachi, good timing. Why would I need that? Sorry, I don't have time to play along with stupid jokes right now. Yeah, I just now got called to work. Important job came up out of nowhere. As Sachi murmurs those words, there's a clear shade of regret on her face. It's one of the more easily comprehensible expressions I've ever seen from the normally poker-faced Sachi. I want to play poker with Sachi. That w I'd probably get my butt kicked. <laughs> no, I'm not canceling, but I need to change the plan a bit. I hadn't been planning to say anything of the sort, but I find the words coming out of my mouth naturally. That look on her face probably had a lot to do with it. Yeah, JB said the job's going to be quick, so I should be back in a few hours. Cool. Alright, wait for me at the usual place, Sachi. Let's say 5 p.m. <laughs> What's with that face? She was going to Culver's too. Slightly late. She have some other plans for this afternoon? Fine by me. There's a possibility I'll be a little late myself, so don't worry about it. You bet, kid. Yeah, that's a promise. I'll definitely make it. And watched his job take like 10 hours. After giving Sachi a quick pat on the head, I immediately rush out of the front door. Eyes fixed on my cell phone screen, I follow the directions JB sent me to the letter. When specifying a rendezvous point through electronic means, the instructions are always split into multiple parts in such a way that it's impossible to determine the end location without cross-referencing every message. Apparently, this is a security measure of some sort, but it's an incredible pain in the ass for the person actually receiving the orders. As I draw near to my initial destination, a second set of instructions arrives. The map attached to the new email bears a single red dot. There we are. Overlaying the map with a visual scan of my surroundings, I determine that the point in question indicates a small public park. This isn't my first time in the neighborhood, but I never knew there was a park here. I really like this gentle guitar psalm. I met the kid in the park, not too different... I met that kid in a park not too different from this one, back in the days where I was a gloomy brat without any real friends. My sister was a prodigy, especially as an artist, and the most I could do was stay out of her way, so I made a daily routine of heading off to a public park with a playground located a few miles away from our house. As a little kid, you were walking a couple of miles to a park every day? Dane, what the heck. I went out of my way to choose one a good distance away. Oh, that's why I killed a little more time walking out and back, and better still, nobody there knew who I was. That's why. When I was idling around in that playground, I didn't have to deal with the people comparing me to my older sister, and I didn't have to listen to my father's vicious insults. Uh-oh. Bad dad. I guess you could say it was the closest thing I had to a safe space. But the days spent playing with sand by myself didn't last that long. How is it secure if it's a map with a red dot on it? Don't ask questions, Florin! <laughs> Don't ask questions. Video game logic. One day, that girl marched right up to me. I don't remember much of the conversation, except for the conclusion. Okay then, let's play together. Wasn't asking either. Without giving me time to think it over, she pulled me around that tiny park all day long. She was an unbelievably pushy kid, to be sure. Laughed and smiled more than anyone else I'd ever known. But she never asked me more about myself than I wanted to tell. 
In other words, playing with her wasn't too bad on my end, either. Before I knew it, I was heading to that park specifically for that purpose. <laughs> of course, that only lasted a short while before that day came. <laughs> before the Empire. <laughs> I think that kid was a major reason I was able to endure everything I was going through back then. Oh. Okay, this really isn't the time to get all sentimental. As if to reinforce the point, a white minivan with a subtly different atmosphere draws to a halt a little ways away. Take care of the job first. Think later. Oh, we just had to get ice cream for JB. It was the ice cream man. Sure. Roused from a half-unconscious state by JB's voice, I remove my sleep mask and step out of the car. Appreciate you dropping me off at school and all, but I've got to say, this car is a little too conspicuous. Noisy on top of flashy. Oh, uh, the bimbo mobile. Don't think I'll ever understand your sense of aesthetics. Well, I guess she's probably not alone. I can picture Amine's eyes gleaming with enthusiasm. Mm. We don't talk about that, though. Heaving a, a small sigh, I glance to my side where JB is currently peering through the gates into the school grounds. Looking for something in particular? I think they all are. Figured as much. Look, JB, I do understand the urge to mess around with the younger generation, but I'd really appreciate it if you could resist the impulse to make my life harder. I don't want spice to my love life. My love life is perfectly fine with just salt and pepper. If you're that concerned about my libido, how about you help me out? <laughs> Get out of here! Giving me a little shove on the back as she passes by, JB slides smoothly back into the driver's seat of the car. <laughs> Hold it, woman! Or not. JB really lives for these little visits, doesn't she? But since she took me here directly, I'm back a good 15 minutes before 5. I'll be in plenty of time to meet up with Sachi. No reason to show up in my work uniform, then. Might as well change first. Yeah, don't show up looking like a garbage man. Hmm? When I arrive precisely on time, I find the classroom completely empty. She said she would be late. Pretty unusual for Sachi, who makes a habit of showing up at the exact time specified. Come to think of it, she did say she might be a little late. Guess I'll wait for a while. Okay, she's really late. Half dozing in the chair I flopped down onto some time ago, I mumble to myself and glance up at the clock. It's a solid hour past the time we agreed to meet. At this point, you'd expect some sort of contact. Might as well see if any of the others know anything. <laughs> Hi, Makina. When I return to the door, Makina's standing by the shoe rack. The instant I push open the door, she swiftly hides something or other inside. I'm not going to tell you not to play pranks on Michiru and Sakaki, but keep it in moderation, alright? We've already seen that happen. Yumiko was trying to murder us earlier on, and Michiru has like a full-on meltdown once per stream, so... Oh, uh, you know what? At least you're introspective. Right, sure, fascinating. On a different note, do you know where Sachi went? That was the plan, but I waited for an hour after the time we set, and she never showed up. Hmm. Right, which is why I thought something else might have come up. You sure you didn't ask her for a favor or something? I see. This doesn't look very promising, but just in case, I should try our other classmates as well. Sorry, Makina, but can you help me round up the others? <laughs> oh, hi. Hello. Fortunately, the other three were still in the dorm, so it didn't take long to collect everyone in the lobby. Sorry about the sudden meeting, but do any of you have any idea where Sachi's gotten to? Hmm. How about you, Sakaki? 
小峰さんなら3時過ぎくらいに寮を出ていくのを見かけたわよ<笑> I feel like Yumiko low-key spies on everybody それは本当なのよ<笑> Yeah, Makina, I can't believe it え、制服を着ていたから今日も風見くんと勉強するものだと思っていたけれど Hmm It's unusual for her to go off in her school uniform if she's not going to school, so Hard to say. We promised to meet in the classroom at five, but Sachi never showed. Just a little bit. As soon as the word leaves my mouth, three voices respond in an uneasy chorus. Apparently, I'm not the only one. Apparently, I'm not the only one more than a little surprised by Sachi blowing off a prearranged meeting. Go for it. After a moment of silence, Michiru raises her hand tentatively into the air. What is it, Michiru? Some relevant information come to mind? This is just gonna be a let's call her. I see. By all means, please share your insight with us. Wow. <laughs> Michiru is the best glare. <laughs> Just tell us already. It's gonna be something really stupid, isn't it? I knew it. You could have said that in a lot fewer words and in a lot less time. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> she doesn't have a cell phone right now. In the first place, Sachi's phone is out of commission at the moment. No, I ate it. Yeah, it was discovered diving in the bathtub just last night. Yeah, she wouldn't have known that. And thus her sprite gets smaller and smaller. A weak attempt at a smile plastered awkwardly across her face, Michiru shrinks before our eyes. She ate the wrong side of the mushroom from Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, that was a fine idea. It was just she didn't know Sachi's phone was out. At least she has her pet cat. I mean, not her pet cat. <laughs> Funny how that happens. Maybe it was a mistake to bring these people into the discussion in the first place. Maybe. さっちゃんと連絡がつかない状況なんでしょ。ふん。やっぱ警察とかに連絡した方がいいのかな。私たちにとっては一大事だとしても、数時間いなくなった程度では警察は動いてくれないわよ。ねえ、つ。それにコミ
Let's wait and see for the moment. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the thumbnail. We'll see. If Sachi still isn't back by this evening, I'll get in touch with the principal and ask her about the next step. Good job, Yuji. Alright then. Okay, I'm going to head back to the classroom and try waiting for Sachi there. But I'd like a volunteer to contact me in case she comes back to the dorm instead. Alright, counting on you, Makina. Plus, she'll... <laughs> pretty perceptive, despite what you might think. Since those four have spent considerably more time living with Sachi, there's no question that they understand her better than I do. Considering that, there's no reason to refuse their help when it's voluntarily offered. Sorry for the hassle. I appreciate this. <laughs> aye, aye, sir. Yeah. Ooh. Awesome music. This late already? Before I know it, the hour's hand crept past nine. Still no sign of Sachi and no word from the others. This is getting beyond weird and into worrisome territory. I really dig this music. <laughs> when I return to the dorm, Amine and Makina jump up from their positions watching the doorway and rush over. No, she didn't come to the classroom at least. Where is she? <laughs> where? I tried to figure out where she could be. Their shoulders droop simultaneously at the news. Maybe she got kidnapped. Maybe this is where the route's gonna start getting intense. Beads of sweat running down their foreheads, Michiru and Sakaki offer familiar similar reports in identical tones of regret and concern. I see. Sorry to make you run around in this heat. A plus response from the Sundere. <laughs> oh man, the, the, the more I play this, the more I like Yumiko. She's just so done with all of these people's nonsense. Yeah, you're right. We're gonna wake her up from her, her evening bath, and it's just like, why are you calling me, Yuji? <laughs> Taking out my cell phone, I dial the principal's private number from memory, because I've dialed it just so many times. To order Girl Scout cookies, you know. She's, she, her niece is big in, into selling those. It's me. Sorry to call so late. I need you to be a principal for me and help me out. To summarize matters concisely, Sachi's gone missing. Yeah, we made pretty clear plans, but she stood me up. Hasn't come back to the dorm since. <laughs> red alert! Red alert! <laughs> There's a slight hint, hint of tension in the principal's voice now. Apparently, we're not the only ones surprised by the idea of Sachi blowing off an appointment like this. Like, one hour. The last time anyone saw her would be a good six hours ago, and unfortunately she doesn't have a cell phone on her at the moment. How convenient that her cell phone got destroyed before this. That would be why I'm reporting to you. As the principal of this school, what do you think we should do about this? After this brief response, there's a moment of silence. Good job, Principal. Seems like a bit of a leisurely approach, frankly. Boom. Right. Well, unquestionably, the correct judgment as the leader of her organization. Ah, so that's it. 
Considering how rapidly she formulated this calm and rational approach to the situation, it's probably safe to trust Chizuru's judgment on the specific details. I guess you're not sitting in the most comfortable chair in the building for nothing. That was nice. Okay, I understand what you're thinking in general, but what should we be doing right now? <laughs> Guys, don't worry, I made superhero costumes for all of us, and we're gonna form, like, a superhero team to find Saji. But then it's gonna become a real thing. <laughs> you imagine correctly, good job. Yeah, only six. That you are. It's true, Japan is a very dangerous country, not. Right, that's probably wise. Reckless action could very well end up expanding the scale of our problem. Yeah, please do. Cutting off the call immediately, I slide my phone shut and push it back into my pocket. She's going to get in touch with Sachi's family first and talk with her guardians about how to proceed. Yeah. After all, there must be some relatively complicated family circumstances involved if they're sending their child to this kind of school. She promised to get in touch immediately if there's any major developments. Yes! More or less. I'll handle that. Because <laughs> I've got permission. Plus, I have a gun. Very perceptive. <laughs> like, run away. <laughs> Sorry, not good enough. <laughs> Makina's voice is unusually fraught with emotion, and small tears of frustration are forming in the corners of her eyes. What do you mean I don't have a gun? I work for, as a janitor. What kind of janitor doesn't have a gun? <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're like a, a secret spy agent or whatever. We really don't have a gun? Well, can't get a gun anywhere these days. <laughs> She's the same age as Sachi and plays with her more than anyone else. Makina might well be the most upset out of all of us right now. Oh, they only give... Oh, okay. They only give us the gun for the missions once we get... Okay, yeah, no, that actually kind of makes sense. Cleaning tightly to Amine from behind, Makina slowly begins to regain her composure. As long as those two are together, I probably don't have to worry about her doing anything reckless. <laughs> you don't want to get caught possessing it in a school dorm. Th yeah, you don't want to get caught possessing it. You can still have it. It's, it's, it's fine as long as you don't get caught. <laughs> okay, I'm going to head out and look for Sachi. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the weirdest people are in here, but okay. Right. Whoa, hey, that's a little close there, Yumiko. Answering Michiru's anxious words with a nod, I walk up to Sakaki, who's been standing a little apart from the rest of the group. Giving her a light tap on the shoulder, I lean in and speak in a low voice. Oh, we're getting a little too close to her. Sakaki, if something comes up while I'm gone, I want you to take charge. Because I trust your judgment in a crisis. If Amine and Michiru lose their heads and try to do something reckless, I'm depending on you to step in and stop them. Well, that was nice. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Taking note of the slight redness in Sakaki's cheeks, I leave the dorm at a run, silently thanking my master for her insight. Alright, I'm, I'm digging this. I'm digging where the plot's going. Alright, first problem is, where do I start? I don't know why Sachi vanished or where she went this afternoon. I've effectively got nothing in the way of specific clues to work off. Given that, my only real option is to speculate based off of her normal pattern of activity, but I'm no expert there. Might as well take another look in the classroom. 
After a brisk journey to the school building, I peek into our classroom, my heart pounding more from the tension than the exercise. It's silent, dark, and totally empty. Not here after all. But still, there's always the possibility that Sachi will wander in here while I'm out looking for her. To protect against the risk, that risk, uh, that we'll pass each other by, I should probably leave her a message of some sort. Good thinking, Toad. Grabbing a thick piece of paper from the supply closet, I write, Sachi, if you see this, head back to the dorm right away, in large letters with a permanent marker. That done, I secure the note in the middle of the blackboard with a few pieces of tape. That should do it. A moment later, my personal cell phone rings shrilly in my pocket. That you, Chizuru? Alright. And? Okay. They're being pretty hands-off about this. I see. From the sound of it, Sachi's family does indeed have some complicated circumstances of their own. So, what's the next step for you? Dane, we got some people who are good in crises right here now. I see. Same thing that you pulled when I arrived here. <laughs> Hi, police. This is Principal Chizuru. Oh, no, not again. Which of you? What did your students do this time? Good idea to hear, I think. Right. Hypothetically speaking, if Sachi's left the prefecture, a larger scale effort involving sheer numbers and brute force would become necessary. <laughs> you bet, kid. I'm the one who promised to meet up with her. I've got a responsibility to find out what happened. Appreciate it. Hopefully that'll get us some information. On the other hand, if she comes up empty, we'll run smack into a demoralizing dead end. Unless, of course, I find a new lead first. For now, that's all I need to be thinking about. Alright, guess I'll see if the others have any ideas about places Sachi frequents. This tension reminds me of the job. But unlike those neatly defined missions, it's a frustrating hunt in the dark, groping blindly for clues. And this time, I'm not chasing down some faceless target I'll never know. The person I'm searching for is a classmate. A friend. Pressing the cell phone to my ear, I sprint down the hallway, trying to drown out my uneasiness through mindless motion. <laughs> 